The more empowered you are, the higher the probability of having a mate. Now, people say, well, no, there's just a chemistry there, but it's actually relatively uh, <laughs> ratios of perception. I will start off by saying there are seven areas of your life that you can empower. So you may want to write these down. You can empower your mental development and wake up your genius, your innovation, creativity, and your mental capital capacities and, and empower yourself mentally. You can empower yourself in business or achievement, success in business, you might want to call it. You can empower yourself financially. You can empower yourself in relationship itself, the science of relationship. You can empower yourself by having a steady relationship or stable family. Uh, you can empower yourself in your social life, your social network. You can empower yourself physically in attractiveness and stamina, strength. And you can empower yourself in, by being inspired. So having an inspired mission, having creative genius, uh, developing business achievement, having financial independence, having a family stability, having social leadership and influence, and physical vitality and attractiveness, all of those are powers. And there's seven basic ones that I happen to use in my, my model, you might say. When you're looking for a mate, you're looking for as many of those powers as possible, and you're also attempting to develop as many powers as possible to increase the probability of attracting somebody. When I've asked women or men, uh, do they want somebody that's physically fit and has strength and looks like they're biologically fit? Consistently, that's one of the most significant things. People that have a physically attractive, a healthy, vital, you know, fit body, that's a very strong attraction for a mate. Do they want somebody who's intelligent? Somebody who can communicate what they value in terms of other people's values, particularly the individual they want to have as a mate. Do they have ambition? This is the things that people are appreciating. Do they have wealth and resources? They prefer to have more money or equal money to them, at least as much as them, if not more. Do they have somebody that really desires them and wants to be mated with them, wants to be with them, shows affection to them? They have social savvy and social connections. And are they inspired? I don't know if anybody gets up in the morning and wants to have less awareness, intelligence, less uh, ambition, less uh, financial well-being, less uh, attractiveness in relationship or stability in relationship, less social influence, less physical fitness, less inspiration. People want to expand those areas. And people, when they're looking for a mate, they're looking for somebody in all those areas. And I've asked literally hundreds of thousands of people uh, what they're looking for. And we've done surveys and we've looked at what priorities are. And they're pretty well boiled down to those seven areas. You're looking for somebody that assists you in empowering all areas of your life. And areas that you have maybe stronger in, you may not be needing, but the areas that you may have less empowerment in, you may be looking for. <laughs> the old uh, proverb of the 72-year-old bald-headed buzzard billionaire looking for the 27-year-old big-breasted beauty is not an uncommon thing. One's producing, one's reproducing, as they say. So they're, dis they're kind of like disowned parts. Any area of your life you're not empowered in, you will attract somebody or search for somebody that'll fill in that power to give you an overall empowerment in your life. Now, the empowerment is a perceptual thing. It's all your perception. Because if you meet somebody that you put above you and minimize yourself to them, you'll disempower yourself. You'll minimize yourself. And if you look down and you exaggerate yourself at somebody, you'll overempower yourself. And these are fluctuating perceptions that determine what you have in the marketplace, where you feel confident in the marketplace relative to somebody else. But that each of those areas are attractive. When I've asked women and men, and it's, it's very common that, that many women initially thought that men are only interested in their looks, but the reality is when I've asked thousands of men, they're looking for a woman empowered in as many of the areas as possible. Just like a woman's interested in empowered men, they're empowered in those areas. It's not just physical. Although, if we look at what we're attracted to, um, 
we start out usually visually we can see farther than we can hear we can hear farther than we can smell we can smell farther than we can touch we can touch or pardon me we can taste and we can taste farther than we can touch so visual is the most efficient vehicle to finding a mate imagine you go into a room of a thousand people and you had to go and look for a mate you you could visually rule them out and see if they match the search image or anti-search image very quickly by visual but if you had to go and listen to each one it would be slower if you had to smell each one it would be even slower if you had to taste every one of them you that would be interesting and if you had to touch every one of them decide whether or not that's the mate well that's very inefficient but visually is the most common that's why people spend so much time on their visual appearance and try to make themselves look attractive because that's what's making them attractive to the mate the visual they don't even get a second chance if they're not visually attractive they usually don't get the other second chance unless they happen to meet them socially and hear them talk and then they may be turned on by their intelligence or something but if you look carefully your visual is usually the first thing and then audio is usually the second one because you then listen to how they speak and if their voice is inspiring and they're intelligent that's a turn on and then if you find out that they're ambitious and they have goals and they have they have some sort of signs that they've got ambition then that's another turn on you're running the best package you can so any area of your life you don't empower people will overpower you and they'll overpower you in finding a mate so if you don't have as much if you're not very fit and you're not very intelligent and you're not very ambitious etc that's going to lower the selection <laughs> there's there's maybe other people that are in the same boat and they'll you'll match that but you're going to lower the selection i'm going to jokingly say i was in antarctica and uh, I was coming off on a zodiac onto the rocky beach area of this little island, and I saw these penguins. And I watched the penguin during their mating season. It was really interesting. And they were big. They were penguins that you know had very symmetrical tuxedo-looking images, and uh, they had giant piles of rocks that would attract the pretty girls, the pretty penguins. And you had this also some really gimpy little penguins that kind of asymmetrical that had one rock or no rocks. And they were trying to steal rocks and trying to get it. And they would get these interesting looking penguins. <laughs> so there's a mate for everybody based on their overall empowerment. Of course, in the penguin world, the number of rocks you have is the degree of your power. So uh, I guess that's still got a little bit in, uh, in human societies too. I guess it's wealth and rocks kind of correlate. I guess uh, if you have a lot of wealth, maybe you have a little less need for some of the other things. But the point is... Uh, you're looking for as many of those seven areas as possible. So the question is, are you empowering those areas? You know, I, I set out when I was 18 years old to empower all seven areas of my life. I found those seven areas back then. And I've been working in for the last 50 plus years on how do you do that? How do you empower yourself intellectually? How do you wake up your genius, your creativity, your mental faculties, your brain function, your your reading capacities, your learning capacities, your 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 memory capacities how do you wake that up and maximize that so you can show and demonstrate to yourself and others through creativity and contribution great genius and creativity that's a power you know if einstein had a vast power across the world and da vinci had a great power around the world because of their creativity michelangelo their creativity but any of those areas that you empower is going to give you in a sense draw somebody to look at you if you have physical physique and you're an Olympic medalist and you great great body, that's automatically attractive. You find that some of the top, top tennis players or swimmers or whatever have beautiful, attractive mates. So you can see that any of those areas you empower <clears throat> gives you an advantage. And that's why I've, I've spent the last 50 years doing that, learning how do you empower those areas? How do you grow your business? <clears throat> how do you grow your wealth? How do you grow your intellectual capacities how do you become inspired by what you're doing how do you keep your body as fit as possible how do you allow yourself to be of value in society where you have a social influence and grow a network how do you become stable in your relationship and not flirtatious and just unstable and how do you uh, empower all these areas that's the key because that's the key to attracting a mate the more empowered you are the higher the probability of having a mate now, people say, well, no, there's just a chemistry there, but it's actually relatively uh, <laughs> ratios of perception. I, 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 I had fun with a lady who's in Sydney, Australia, who came to my Breakthrough Experience program. 
I normally, we, in those days, we had a larger number of people that sometimes would come to the program in, in Sydney compared to some countries. And we had a great promoter there. And so we wait and have everybody wait outside before they come in. Well, I was about to start the program when we were about to open the doors and let everybody in. And this one lady and man had come in early and they snuck in. And this lady came up to me at the sitting right in the fourth seat in the front row and said, Dr. Martini, I finally made it to the breakthrough experience. And I said, I said, great. And it says, thank you for coming. And she says, yeah, I'm coming here and I'm looking for my soulmate. And I thought, okay, just for fun, I thought I would tease her. And because uh, I'm a, kind of a trickster sometimes. And, and there was a guy in there who was eating this, I guess it was McDonald's Mac sandwich, breakfast sandwich or something. And he was kind of slobbery. And uh, he was sitting back about five rows. And I said, what about this guy? And I knew this guy would not be the attractive one. And she looked at me and she, she, she looks over her shoulders at him and she goes, oh, God, no, 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 that's not my type. And I said, really? So that's surprising. I said, why? She said, why? I said, do you know who this guy is? And she goes, no. I said, you don't recognize him? He goes, no. He's one of the wealthiest billionaires in your country. Really? Yeah, We've, we let him in here so he wouldn't be out there because people recognize him. He's kind of incognito. He's kind of dressed down. He's trying to make himself look like he's just an average guy. But he's, yeah, he's one of the most powerful men in the country. He's got yachts and he's got planes and he's got penthouses and homes. And he, he hangs out with the most powerful A-list social networks around the celebrities and politicians and leaders of the world of all different types. And he travels the world. And I went around and I basically made up this story about all these powers around uh, around this guy, you know, and he's, he was he was a, once a decathlon runner. Da, da, da. I just went on and, and made up this thing for fun. <laughs> and when I finished, she turned to me and, and she, she said, well, aren't you going to introduce me to him? <laughs> I stacked up enough associations that matched the powers in the seven areas of life around this guy who didn't know anything was going down. And all of a sudden, she went from totally not interested, oh, God, no, to all of a sudden interested because she associated more and more opportunities and empowerment with that and overlooked the way he looked and realized that if he's got enough of the other six powers, the looks are less important, although that's important. And she kind of thought, well, I could endure that. And, you know, it wasn't ugly or anything. It just was looked kind of down because of the, the way he was dressed. But it was just to show that if I, if I stack up enough associations, people will be turned on. And so the neurochemistry of attraction has a lot to do with what you perceive that individual to be, what they can offer you. There's a little bit of a, I guess you could say, in a fair exchange. You're wanting the best package you can get out there. We, if you look at women, there's usually a, a, a checklist. Men and women have checklists. They call it search images and anti-search images. Anything that's been painful in their experience with relationships, they create as an anti-search image. Anything that's been pleasurable, they get to create a search image. So they go avoid certain people that are associated with pain and seek those that have been associated with pleasure. And that's our animal amygdala, our survival mechanism underneath. And then we also have sort of an intellectual process. Of what, what are they offering? And they may be attractive, but are they empowered in all areas? So we have to use a little bit of the physical attraction for mating, but also also our reasoning. If you do only impulse, you probably get into problems. But if you end up using your reason in addition to that, you probably get somewhere. But if all of a sudden they have an empowerment in all areas, that makes them very attractive. Uh, I'm amazed if you had five men sitting there and, and they have different levels of income and different levels of intelligence, and they all look about the same, um, they can make a distinction between their levels of intelligence and their ambitions and their, their income, and et cetera. And that can be more attractive. Women can select because they're looking for the best package they can get. They want security. The men, the men are doing the same thing. They, they don't want somebody that's a total dependent and it's something that's going to have a, just looks that's got a depreciation uh, when they get older because then it's a purchase, not a purchase plan, it's a rental program. <laughs> I mean, so we, we are not dumb. We, we kind of figure things out. We're looking for the best package we can. So anything you can do to empower the seven areas of your life is going to give you a competitive advantage. And that's the bottom line. So that's what this science of attracting, uh, science of attraction of a mate is, is how do you empower the seven areas of your life? Now, I'm going to address something. I've said before and in many of my other presentations how important it is to know what your values are. 
because anytime you anytime you're living by your highest values the things that are most important highest in priority you bring your blood glucose and oxygen into the forebrain into the executive center and you tend to have more objectivity more stability and more clarity and you're more likely to have strategic planning mitigating risk inspired vision uh, executing plans without impulses and instincts distracting you you're more stable you're more powerful that's why people who prioritize their life and do things that are high in value uh, become valuable in fact when you do things that are high in value you become more valuable in the marketplace when you do things low in your value you become less valuable so anytime you're doing the ABCs, you rise up into the alpha position. If you're doing X, Y, Z's, you go down. And so prioritizing your life and basically identifying what your values are, which on my website, drdmartini.com, I have a value determination process for that purpose. It's complimentary for you. It's private, free. You can go online and do that. Or you can come to the Breakthrough Experience Program where I actually help people go through it so they get clear on that and start learning how to prioritize their life, delegating lower priority things, empowering those areas. And then if you take the time to go and map out how you would love your life and live by design instead of just duty and subordination to outer world, because everybody around you is projecting their values on you and expecting you to live in their values. And if you're trying to live in their values and not your own, you're going to disempower yourself. The two things that disempower those seven areas is putting people on pedestals and injecting their values and trying to live in their values, which is futile, which is frustrating or looking down on people and trying to get them to live in your values, which is futile and frustrating. Those are disempowering mechanisms. But the second you look across and love people and realize through reflective awareness, whatever you see in them, you have inside you, you empower your life. That's why I teach the Breakthrough Experience Program to teach people how to have reflective awareness, how to live by priority, how to delegate lower priority things, how to give yourself permission to rise up and empower yourself with greater self-worth and how to actually not put people on pedestals and pits, but put them in your heart. When you actually love, you empower yourself. <laughs> people are looking for love and they're looking for that. And you, people want to be loved for who they are. And when you're being authentic and you're living by your highest value, which is an expression of your ontological identity, where you are yourself, that's where you have the most power. So by prioritizing your life, stabilizing your life with the executive function, you become more of an executive and people are drawn to an executive more so than somebody that's maybe less empowered. And if you do that, um, you'll end up attracting more and more potential relationship mates. Now, if you are self-righteous looking down on people, uh, you're going to want to keep your options open. If you're an underdog looking up at people, you're going to want to hurry up and cling that to that individual and tie them down and smother them and push them away. If you're the overdog, you tend to want another. If you're an underdog, you tend to want to smother. If you have an equal, fair exchange, sustainability and reflective awareness where you love and both love at the same level and find a match where you can, you can handle praise and reprimand equally in the pursuit of your own purposes, then you have a match and you're drawn into that. But that requires you mastering your life, stabilizing your systems. That's the reason I put together the Breakthrough Experience. The Breakthrough Experience is there to train you on how to dissolve emotional baggage, dissolve all the wounds of the past and the fantasies of the future, and to dissolve all of the judgments of putting people up or down and learn how to put them in your heart. When you're living by priority, you have a higher probability of that. When you're not, and you're living by lower priority things, you're more volatile, more judgmental, the more uh, polarized in your perceptions, have more disowned parts, which blocks intimacy and love, which is not attractive. So that's why I tell people to come to the Breakthrough Experience, and there's a lot of people who have come there and manifested their mates when they learn the principles. I explained to them that as long as you're too humble to admit what you see in others inside yourself, or too proud, you're going to have a lack of intimacy. You're going to have a feeling of emptiness and non-fulfillment. But if you can see that the individuals that you, you look at, that you admire, and find out where you have the same thing and have reflective awareness, you draw up, raise the playing field, and draw them in, magnetize them into your life. This is very powerful. Many people come to me and say, well, how do you find your soulmate? I tell them to make a list of everything they're looking for, make a list of its very opposite because you get both sides, Find out who's providing that in your life currently so you're not lacking it. And then you realize that your hierarchy of values is creating a form that it's in. Then realize that it, you're getting what you're looking for, but it's in a diversified group of people, everything you're looking for. 
if you want it in one, you have to go and identify what are the wounds of the past of the relationship you've had and clear those wounds. Because if you don't have a clear, you don't clear those wounds, you're going to try and avoid certain behaviors that are associated with what you also say you want. I had this woman that said that I had this really wealthy guy, but he was a control freak. And I, I, I didn't want to, you know, be controlled by him. Or I had this guy who's really good looking, but he had all these girls after him and we were making love. He was focused on himself, not me. So there was always a pain with the thing they liked. If you can't embrace the pain and pleasure of every human being that you're in relationship with, don't expect to have a lasting relationship. You're trying to get rid of half of them. And people want to be loved who they are. And you do too. So that's why I tell people to come to the Breakthrough Experience so I can show you how to get clear on what your values are, how to prioritize and organize your life accordingly, how to delegate lower priority things so you're most empowered, how to have more self-worth, how to link all seven areas of your life to that highest value so you're empowered, and how to dissolve all the emotional baggages from the search image and the anti-search image that's making you think you're missing things and making you feel empty and lacking in intimacy and allow you to learn how to love. That's why that's so powerful. The breakthrough experience is so powerful. And so many people who've had relationship challenges or didn't have a relationship, when they come to that, they've transformed that because they realize how to empower their life. Any area of your life you don't empower, other people are going to overpower you. They're going to outbid you in the marketplace. And that's why you want to come and empower all areas of your life. That's why I tell people to come to the breakthrough experience and do their values and learn the Demartini method, which is how to level the playing field, how to clear the baggage, how to empower those areas and how to do links, how to take whatever you're doing in the seven areas of your life and link it to what you value most so you're inspired by your life because people want to be around people who are inspired. Anyway, I just thought I'd share some ideas on the science of attraction of a mate because we're all kind of, whether we like it or not, we're probably in a relationship with somebody that we're classifying as our mate. And in the process of doing that, there's a science behind it. And I just gave you some tidbits on it. There's more to it. That's why I teach the breakthrough experience to get in way more detail than what I can do in 30 minutes. But I just wanted to share that. So come and join me at the breakthrough experience and go online and do your value determination and, um, and take advantage of maybe watching this more than once because I probably went a bit fast on some parts. But just know that you have the power inside you. Nothing's missing. At the level of the essence of your being, the very soul, as the theologians called it, the most authentic you, nothing's missing in you. Let me show you in the Breakthrough Experience how to be aware that nothing's missing so you can empower your life in each area so you can draw and magnetize the individual that you would love as a mate, as a match. Until next week, I'll see you and thank you for joining me today. I'll see you at the Breakthrough Experience.